Hello, I'm Edges, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today. Elko, how are you? Bonjour, TT. How are you? <laughs> très bien, très bien. And as you très can bien. probably guess, in this episode, we are going to be looking at France, Les Bleus. Uh, Elko, what do you think? How are they going to fare following what was ultimately a disappointing home World Cup for them? Yeah, it's a tough one um, to, to get a pill to swallow i think for the for the for the team the squad for the for the management in particular who moved heaven and earth to to get them in a place to win it and, and for the for the public but um i think there's good continuity they they picked a, a fairly recognizable squad um there's some good good french teams in form in, in champions um cup um so i'm looking forward to to seeing them play but disappointed that uh one of the best players in the world is is um is not going to be there but we'll talk about that Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, only one team can win the World Cup, obviously. And I think if that happened to have been France, I, nobody would have complained about that at all. They were certainly capable of winning it. And I see that in this squad that has been selected here. So let's dive into it in some detail. And we'll start off with the forwards. Uh, what are you seeing here, Elko? What are you picking out? Huge. <laughs> Massive. Someone on Twitter put it the other day. They were like, "This, this has. Got, if they pick certain players, it's going to be over a thousand kilos. Just like mad, you know. So big, big old team. Um, you know, spine of what we've seen before. Uh, we know what's coming. They're going to be big, abrasive. Um, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This first game uh, on, on the on the Friday night, which is a continuation on. I think from from. From uh, looking at both squads, um, th 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 it's good, you know. Um, and it's nice, I think, to see uh, Aldri taking over the the armband, and that stood out to me. Um, I didn't realise it was only uh, sort of listening to to some of the, the noise around uh, La Rochelle um, that that Aldri had taken time off after the World Cup. He'd come back and said, "I need, I'm, I'm, I'm going for a walk," and he wa and he didn't come back till the 30th of December. So he been out and refreshing, and now he's back playing and looks looks like he's not skipped a beat. So it's good to see him in in there. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this this pack go at it for sure. Yeah, they are huge, and I saw that tweet on Twitter as well. Is a guy called James Weil. So go and give him a follow if you aren't already. The one ton pack, potential one ton pack with every single player. Uh, over 110 kilos with a couple at 145. Monstrous, absolutely monstrous. Um, but out of this forward pack, the player I think that I'm most excited to watch every single time is Malvaka, the hooker. He just is an unbelievable rugby player. And, you know, he's got yeah. all the set-piece skills nailed down and he just gives so much around the field. Uh, as a hooker yourself, Alko, I mean, what, what do you think of Malvaka? Hey, do you think he's going to start? Even? Because he, he might not even start, though. They've got several good. No, numbers. it depends. Yeah, and this is the thing. They've got they've got really good strength and depth. Um, it's sort of as they come come off of this cycle and, and into a new one. Uh, he is. I like him a lot. I like his hair. Um, he, he's he's great around the. He 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 did struggle with throwing for a while, and he he seems to have pinned that down. I think they've they've simplified um with with some of their 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 big boys there. But he's a he's a quality player. The other chap is um is it Miafu? Um, or me yeah. um, who's who's the guy who ran over um Twigalagi when they played Sale um a few weeks ago, and he is an absolute beast. I think he's a is he an Aussie or or Kiwi or, or a little bit of a little bit of both. Um, but he looks he looks like a monster. But they just they just keep bringing these guys through. Um, and um, yeah, it. it it, it could be, you know, we were speaking about one of the other squads in 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 um, in Wales in in um, the pod before this one, and it's uh, we spoke about how a few injuries here and there could get dangerous, and and this one, I mean, if you're up against a pack, that's a that's a ton, and you've got an inexperienced pack, this is where it could get a little bit squiffy, but um, they'll be ruthless and and very difficult to beat, I think. Yeah, we've mentioned a couple of very heavy second rows there. One that's missed out through injury, I, I believe, is uh, Thibaut Flamont, who's who's been outstanding for the last few years. Uh, and one other player that I want to pick out from this forward lineup, just because of his name, a baddie. If you're going to be a back rower, be a baddie, I think. I mean, what a great <laughs> name for, 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 for a back rower. I bet he's a killer. Um, okay, let's Absolutely. move on to <laughs> let's move on to the backs. 
And obviously, you mentioned it in the intro there. No Dupont off playing sevens, hopefully picking up a gold medal for France. I think that's that's the, the aim. Um, obviously, very sad for the Six Nations. Uh you know, basically the best player in the world at the moment. And given time, he might end up being the best player that's ever played. Uh, how do you feel about yeah. that? Um, I think it's different to um, our Welsh friend going off to uh, NFL um, because I think it's instant and, and it's realistic. And he's it, he, it may well be a nice way of him having a little bit of a break from 15s as well um although obviously it's gonna be physically pretty tough um it might improve him as a player uh, <laughs> which which is you know we oh. always hear that when people go and play sevens i don't know um <laughs> maybe it will ruin him it'll come back and just be awful uh no i, I don't yeah look it, it's not great for, for for the game but 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 in the nines that france have coming through actually and i'm sure we'll speak about one of them a few of them now in a second i think um it's interesting, and they had, you know, they, they had to cope when he was injured um, in the World Cup, and they did that did that really well. Um, so, probably really good in the long term um, to develop ways of winning without him. But obviously, as a fan, I'm I'm gutted because I I just love the guy. I think he's he he is the best player we've we've probably seen um, just in everything he does. He's he's amazing. But stay la vie, as they say in uh, Paris. Indeed. And of course, the other great thing from this back selection is talking about picking on form. The Bordeaux team that tore Saracens to pieces last week has got six players uh, selected in the back. So they got that wonderful connection from playing club rugby together to then take that onto the international stage as well, which I mean, we've seen most recently um, with Leinster, really. So what do you think about that, Elko? Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. It, it, it's one of the sort of things I, I, I sort of took from the selection, and we 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 spoke about it with, with, with um, some of the other teams, and and um, some of the most successful England teams have had big sort of you know either Saracens or back in the nineties with Leicester players and everything else. You, you you tend to have that sort of that spine through it, and Leicester is another good example. I think it's amazing. What's really interesting is that there isn't one forward from from Bordeaux, in, which I thought was was crazy but pretty much their whole back line and you know um th- they are on fire it's not even um just the game against saracens but but some of the other performances that they put in they are when they cut loose they are ripping teams to, to, to pieces um and jali bear is just uh, amazing to look at you know he's 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 doesn't get as much plaudits as as um as Dupont does, but he's 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 not far off, you know. He's 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 awesome. And um the the winger is at BL BL Berry, um that young yep. kid with the scrum guy, he's he's rapido, you know. So really interesting. And um we spoke about earlier about you know what do they do without Dupont with Lu- Luca, who is their nine, he looks good. I like him, he's very old school France. He's he's you know, he, he can, he's a real little general. Um he's he's it, you know, at the start of everything, um, but they are they. If they can bring that form into a French team that likes to cut loose, as we know they do, then watch out. It could be, could be fireworks. Hopefully, not against Ireland. <laughs> right. Um, so, so this is a very experienced squad, but there are four uncapped players in there as well. So, looking to bring through some of the youth too, which is a you know very much necessary you know they need to pay attention to age profiles of squads and make sure people are getting experience at the right times now my thoughts are that DuPont or no DuPont they are going to be absolutely challenging for the title maybe a grand slam again this year I, I just see them carrying on as I said you know there are a couple of decisions or a couple of breaks of the ball away from winning a world cup as far as I'm concerned that's what I think Elko what, what do you think where do you think they're going to be yeah I, I, I think they're going to potentially probably win us. They've got Ireland at home, which will probably be the second toughest test, probably. Um, Friday night in, in um, at home in... It's not, I think it's not in Paris this year, so they're playing all their games, I think. Uh, I think this is not play. Okay. Yeah, because of the Olympics thing. Um, but um, I don't know if you saw, again, If we just looking at our socials, I retweeted a, a really interesting tweet from a guy called Russ Petty on the Six Nation debuts. Uh, it's really Stats- interesting tape. Ah, oh, it's unbelievable and, and something you go wow. So just looking at how many sort of debuts were made, and 
four years ago, at the beginning of this of the of the last World Cup cycle, twenty twenty, um, France gave eight uh, debuts out, and then in twenty one none, in twenty two none, and in twenty one one, which is which is mad. And then Ireland were very very similar. So it's interesting in this cycle. Although you said there's a few, there's not as many, but I guess that's because they've the nucleus of the squad, the age profile is is bang on. Um, so they, they France will be France will be epic, I think this, and, and they're probably they probably want to prove uh, a point as well by you know not doing as well as they thought they would uh, in the World Cup a few months ago. I think they'll really want to go out and do a Grand Slam, worryingly. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think they're going to, yeah, they're going to be very tough to beat. That's for sure. So people at home, that's what we think. What do you think? How do you see this French team going? Are there any players that we fail to pick up on that, that you think are going to make a big difference? Um, and let us know about that down in the comments down below and we will join you for a conversation there. While you're down there, give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind and hit subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Alco, thanks so much again. Thanks, CT. See you soon. And for those at home, get out and play.